Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Zoo School Live. And in celebration of the love holiday this weekend, Valentine's Day, we're actually going to be having our own special Galentine's Day with two of our resident birds here at Elmwood Park Zoo. We have our friend Stan the turkey vulture and Hunter the red-tailed hawk. We're going to get nice and close on them in just a moment. And we're celebrating Galentine's Day with them because they are actually an interspecies couple here at the zoo. So while in the wild, red-tailed hawks and tur turkey vultures wouldn't necessarily pair up, they have here because they do live in the same enclosure. And we'll talk about how they do share the same habitat in the wild and how they kind of help each other out and how they help humans and a little bit about their relationship as well. So I am going to get you guys nice and close to Miss Stan and Hunter. Here we go. So we'll start off with our lovely black vulture, Stan. Here we go. And as I, I'm sorry, turkey vulture. So as I said, she is a female. Both Stan and Hunter are females. And this time of year is when a lot of our raptors, so hawks, eagles, owls, vultures, they're going to start to pair up and get ready for the breeding season. So it's very fitting that this time of year matches up with Valentine's Day when we're celebrating love of all different shapes and sizes. So in the wild, turkey vultures do mate for life. They are monogamous, so they will pair up and they will stay together as long as they are both healthy and um, able to breed. And they actually don't build really big nests. They actually nest on the ground or on ledges and cliffs and little crevices. So they have a little bit of a different, different nesting habit compared to many of our other birds. We're going to see if we can get a little closer over here too. To our beautiful turkey vulture. There she is. So they are going to build nests on kind of more open space. They'll still perch up pretty high so that they're safe and out of danger. Now they're going to lay around usually one to three eggs. So they don't have a really big clutch of eggs. And those babies are going to take up to 12 weeks to hatch out and become actual fledglings, which means that they're going to be able to fly and start to take care of themselves. And both the mom and the dad, both the male and the female, will take care of the babies uh, and feed them and protect them as needed throughout that season. So we're going to move on over to our friend Hunter, our other female. So she is actually a red-tailed hawk, and we're going to try to get nice and zoomed in for you guys. So she's perched back here, enjoying a nice warm spot where her little shelter box is. So red-tailed hawks are actually the largest hawk species that we have here in Pennsylvania. And Hunter is here because unfortunately she had an eye injury and a wing injury, so she's unable to fly and care for herself in the wild. Like turkey vultures, in the wild, red-tailed hawks are going to be monogamous. They're going to nest for life, mate for life, and they will reuse their nest spaces. So a little bit different than a vulture, red-tailed hawks will build very large stick nests. And they'll usually pick really super tall trees, and that way they can see and survey their surroundings and watch out for any other hawks in the area or potential predators. And they're going to lay sometimes between one and five eggs. And those eggs are going to stay in the nest for a couple weeks. And it takes them about uh, eight weeks to grow up and hatch out and become little baby red-tailed hawks that can then leave the nest as fledglings. Just like the turkey vulture, both the parents take care of the babies. They will bring them food and protect the nest. Now, before the nest actually is built and before those eggs are laid, Red-tailed hawks go through a very elaborate courtship display. So the males will kind of follow around the females and they'll soar really high in the sky. And then they'll actually dive down really fast. And sometimes they'll even lock talons and kind of do a spiral dive together. So it's a pretty cool courtship display. And turkey vultures like Stan also do some different things to show off and to attract a mate. Um, in the wild, turkey vultures are actually going to follow each other around. So they're going to mimic each other's flight patterns. So if one turkey vulture is kind of soaring in one direction and making different turns, the male will follow close behind to try to mimic every action. And that's how they do their courtship displays. 
Now Stan and Hunter, again, live here at the zoo because they're non-releasable. When it comes to Stan the turkey vulture, unfortunately she suffered a wing injury as well. And this prevents her from being able to fly. So in the wild, they wouldn't necessarily pair up. These two species cannot mate together. They can't have their own babies. But here in a zoo setting, they can provide each other different comforts in a relationship. So even though they're both females, they do nest together pretty much every year. Now those eggs are just kind of like your chicken eggs at home. They aren't going to hatch out any babies. Uh, but they do lay eggs. Hunter, the red-tailed hawk, she's the one who would do the egg laying typically. And then Stan helps out by keeping the nest warm and safe. So they share those responsibilities. So they provide each other um, some different nesting behavior opportunities and they also provide each other companionship, which is really important for some animals. Now in the wild, birds of prey are often going to be solitary for most parts of the year, but they do pair up every year for mating season. And again, they are going to mate for life in most cases. So for Stan and Hunter, while they are not a couple that you would see naturally in the wild necessarily because they are two different species, uh, they provide each other a lot of good um, companionship and comfort. In fact, they like to preen each other and they kind of protect each other and they look out for things. You know, if there's something that's making one nervous, they can alert the other. And then of course they do nest together. Now, same sex couples are actually pretty common in the wild. Um, in many different species, such as dolphins and different penguins, the albatross is known to have two females nesting and caring for their babies together. And this is something we see pretty frequently because it does provide an opportunity for um, a couple that maybe has not successfully paired off officially to raise the next generation. So it's a pretty cool thing we see in nature pretty often um, where the males and females might mate and then two females might get together to raise that baby um, together instead of uh, the normal male and female pair. Again, our Hunter and Stan are not going to be able to have any actual little babies, but they can provide each other some really important contact and companionship. So I actually have our friend Keeper Eric here today. I'm going to pan over so you guys can say hello real quickly. Howdy. And he is responsible for our care of our birds here today and some of their enrichment. So I actually have some really cool stuff we're going to take a look at that Eric put together specifically for Hunter and Stan today. Um, so in honor of Valentine's Day and Valentine's Day, we have this really fun um, snowman. It did just snow and it's actively snowing right now. So we tried to get in theme here. So you can see that the snowman has some eyes made out of little meatballs and then some bones for arms and uh, I guess hands there. And then Eric also made some really cool blood sickles. So there's a nice donut because everybody likes sweet treats on Valentine's Day, right? And then over here we have some more little blood sickles we'll take a look at. We've got a little uh, ocean theme going on. So we have an octopus and a fish, I believe. Um, so these are fun food items that Keeper Eric has put together for Stan and Hunter to provide them some enrichment. Because while it is good enrichment for them to live together and be companions, they also need other kinds of stimulation. They need some food options. They need to use their hunting drive, their prey drive, and things like that. So I'm actually going to ask our friend Eric a couple questions about Stan and Hunter. Remember, just like other Zoo School Live episodes, if you guys have questions specifically about Stan and Hunter, our red-tailed hawk and our turkey vulture, you can drop those in the comments right now and we'll go through and answer them here on live. Eric, I just wanted to ask you today about their personalities a little bit. These guys do live on exhibit, so if you come to visit the zoo, you are very easily able to see them. They're both very good at sitting out um, vis and being visible throughout the day. So in your opinion, Eric, which one of them is the most uh, brave or bold when it comes to new things? So uh, Hunter, our red-tailed hawk, is definitely um, our most brave out of the two, definitely. Uh, when she's really hungry, she'll actually sometimes come up to the keepers and actually take food from our hands. Um, she also is a very intelligent bird. Not saying Stan is not, it's just that uh, Hunter really appreciates puzzle enrichment. So uh, puzzle enrichment is all kinds of different toys that uh, we have here at the zoo that either 
um, we're able to purchase ourselves or we actually have the uh, Amazon wish list so if anybody wants to uh, purchase any toys for any of our animals you can check out our Amazon wish list and it has all kinds of toys and uh, what animals we use it for um, but uh, Hunter will love to figure out little puzzles to uh, pop out a piece of food um, her, her favorite is definitely rats uh, that's definitely one of her favorites so uh, if we put it in a toy or anything like that she'll definitely uh, like to spend a couple uh, hours or so trying to figure out how to get the toy out and then sometimes even she'll play with the toy a little bit longer just making sure that there's no food to pop out now she might be the most bold when it comes to new toys and all that but Stan is definitely very bold when it comes to Hunter uh, as Laura was saying, uh, they definitely are a nested pair. One of the easiest ways to actually tell that is they will feed each other. So that's something that only nested pairs really will do or anybody that like either a, uh, a young uh, bird will uh, have their parents feed them uh, because nobody wants to give up food. Um, so it takes a very special relationship uh, for an animal to want to actually give up food. So like Hunter will figure out all the toys and then Stan will come over and start uh, preening around her face and be like, uh, can you just give me a little bit of a snack? And Hunter, uh, being a very nice little nest partner, will actually feed Stanley. And vice versa as well. If Stanley happens to find a lot of food herself, she'll go over and make sure that Hunter gets plenty to eat as well. Awesome. So when it comes to, um, let's say, their, their most activity level, is one of them a little bit more of a a lazy bird likes to sleep around, like sleep in or, or roost and is one of them more active or are they kind of equally active? I would say they're equally active. Um, I will say that Hunter, um, they don't have flight as we think of most birds, um, but Hunter definitely has a little bit more of a glide than Stan does. So Hunter might be a little more active in uh, flying around the exhibit, so to speak. Um, they're both definitely most active after the keeper is done putting their food down and putting new enrichment out because they got to see what we all, everything that we touch, make sure everything's still in the right place and uh, get all their snacks. Um, but uh, I would say Hunter may be a little more active, but they're, they're pretty equal. That's great. Does one of them prefer to sunbathe more than the other? Do they have different um, like daily routines? Is one of them more of a like I want to sit in the sun kind of bird? One of them wants to sit in the shade? Or do they kind of have equal habits there? So um, both sunbathe definitely, but um, I would say that Stan definitely uh, sunbathes a lot more. And it's definitely way more dramatic about it. Uh, being a vulture, um, and you'll probably see a lot of our black vulture <laughs> population that we have around here that uh, vultures are pretty prone of spreading out their wings really wide so that they can catch all those good rays on their wings. Uh, so I would say that um, Stan is definitely more of a sunbather than Hunter, but both love a good warm sunny day. That's great. Thanks, Eric. Um, do either of them have a favorite food here at the zoo? Um, I would say both. They love rats. They love their frozen rats the most, uh, that's for sure. Um, outside of that, um, they also get chicks, um, and of course, sometimes, especially, they can pick out a bone and all that sort of stuff, but uh, number one very easily is they love rats. <laughs> Have either of them made other friends here in the zoo as far as some of the wild birds that might hang out and visit? So, uh, you, if you point, actually, the camera up at the black vultures hanging out back there, uh, we, we would say that uh, Stan definitely kind of likes uh, uh, seeing all the black vultures around. Uh, not that she feeds any of them because that food obviously would go to Hunter. Um, black vultures in the wild, um, how they find food a lot of time is they look for the turkey vultures because turkey vultures have a very good sense of smell, which is pretty rare for a bird. Um, and they are very good at finding uh, the dead carcasses um, and all that. So all these black vultures, uh, seeing a turkey vulture like Stan here is like, oh, that's a dinner bell. And of course, Stan likes saying uh, hi uh, to them as well. We might have some black vultures that hang around the exhibit and she'll kind of walk over and check them out. Uh, Hunter, on the other hand, uh, not so much. She, she, she'll scream at any other uh, wild red tail that's flying around, letting them know, hey, this is my area. And that's pretty uh, reasonable in that a lot of times uh, it's more vultures are a little more communal 
uh, out in the wild, especially because obviously you kind of have to share uh, any sort of car chase you find. Whereas red tails kind of have more of a territory and it's really, they, they really only like uh, their uh, other nest made or other birds in the area because uh, they don't travel as much as the vultures do. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. So remember anyone, if you have questions about Hunter or Stand, now is your chance to put them into the comments and we will try to answer them in just a moment. As we're kind of wrapping up here today, um, it is a pretty awesome thing to have Stan and Hunter here at the zoo. Again, they are both uh, rehabilitated birds. That means that they are not able to be released. So they have permanent physical injuries, which is pretty much the case for a lot of our raptors here at Elmwood Park Zoo. But it's really important to share these species with guests and with um, the public because both of them provide some really awesome services for humans. So while we're sharing their love story today, it's of course important to share the love for vultures and hawks every day of the year because these are two different animals that can actually have really big impacts on humans. When we're talking about vultures, they are a species that is often misunderstood and, and underappreciated. People think that they look a little strange because they don't have feathers on their heads or their feet. Um, they're often portrayed in videos and movies as kind of a bad omen, a symbol of evil or darkness. But in reality, they help to keep our planet clean. Turkey vultures and black vultures that live in our area clean up carcasses, so dead animals, and help to prevent the spread of disease and bacteria. So without them, we would have a much messier planet. And then when we're talking about red-tailed hawks, this is again the largest and the most common hawk species here in, North, in a, the Eastern North American area. And they eat a ton of small rodents. So they're gonna eat mice and rats and squirrels and all kinds of things that can actually become pest problems for humans. So they help to control pest populations and they do this for free. So if you have rodent problems in your area, red-tailed hawks are most likely gonna be on the hunt and helping you out without you even realizing it. So I did see a couple questions here. So let's see, um, Owen, age 11, is wondering how old they are. So maybe Eric, you could help me out with answering our questions today. So yep. how old are Hunter and Stan? So we can only guess their ages uh, because of them being from the wild. Uh, like Laura was saying, they were deemed non-releasable uh, birds, uh, normally by US Fish and Wildlife or another state organization. So it's not uh, us who actually determines it. Um, normally we're uh, reached out to, but uh, our best estimates are that uh, Stan is about 15 years old and Hunter is about 17. Awesome. So 15 and 17 and naturally um, they can live a pretty long time. So turkey vultures can have a, a lifespan uh, both in, in zoo care and in the wild of upwards of 20 to 30 years. So as long as they're healthy and they have good food sources, they can live a long time. And the same thing with red-tailed hawks. They're often going to live 15 to 20, sometimes longer, um, depending on, again, food sources and predators. So they can live a long life and hopefully they'll continue to live a nice long life here at the zoo together, keeping each other company. Well, they get the best food, that's for sure. <laughs> they do. Remember, we'll take another look at those really fun enrichment uh, items that Eric put together today. So again, we have our wonderful winter themed um, enrichment. We have a snowman made of some looks like deer bones and some meat and a carrot, although I doubt they're going to go for that carrot, but they might shred it up maybe. for fun, but <laughs> that, that just is more of the ensemble. Exactly. And then we have our little bloodsickle donut for a nice sweet treat and our little octopus and our fish. And as Eric was saying earlier, if you guys want to help out our animals here at the zoo, especially during the winter when it's very snowy and, you know, they need care every single day, no matter what the weather, and our keeper staff work very hard to provide that, you can check out our um, website, elmwoodparkzoo.org. We have different options for donations. And then, of course, we have our Amazon wish list. As Eric said earlier, we have lots of different enrichment that we are really hoping to get for our animals because it provides them fun activities and ways to stimulate them um, and keep them active and healthy. And you can provide those items by checking out our Amazon wish list. And while the items may not directly go to Stan and Hunter right away, a lot of those things circulate through and make their way over. A great example is we actually uh, recently had uh, someone buy a slide for the otter. And uh, because we like to keep things fresh, it's not like the slide is in there every single day with the otters. Uh, that we actually brought it over here and then hid some food on the slide so that Hunter and Stan had to use that item to get some food as well. As Laura said, 
Um, the items might have a specific animal in mind at first, but all of our toys here get rotated through all our different animals on exhibit and off exhibit, uh, especially in the education department as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed hearing Hunter and Stan's love story. And next time you guys get a chance to come out to the zoo, make sure you stop by their exhibit. They are located outside the Wildlife Lodge, and they are outside all year round um, because they have uh, pretty good feathers to keep nice and toasty warm. And I hope that all of you have a wonderful Valentine's Day weekend and stay warm and, and have a great time. We'll see you next week for Zoo School Live.